Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. We thank you, Father, for the entrance of your word that brings light to our spirit, light to our heart and our mind, our soul. We thank you today that as we teach on how to build kingdom teams, Lord, you'll give us wisdom. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today is going to be on kingdom team building. And uh, I've just mentioned, as I do every week, and David's going to turn off his phone. Great. All of us, all of us, in fact, are going to shut off our cell phones during this study, all right? Thank you. Because <laughs> I know you get a lot of calls, David. All right. Uh, the Kingdom Business Community blog spot, you'll want to check that out. Also, our, our Kingdom Business uh, Network, uh, KBBN Network, that's, that's doing really well. And uh, we're excited about that. Uh, if you know any business people, by the way, that want to get noticed, we have our Get Notice campaign. Today we're going to look at foundation for teamwork, and it's based on two mandates, by the way. Uh, they're found in the book of Genesis. Do you know that God is a team? Mm -hmm. Amen. Ever think about that? God is a team. Uh, it says in the book of Genesis, let us make man in our image. So the image of God intrinsically includes a team. We are built to be in relationship with people, right? Not be alone. God never designed us to be alone. When you get alone, you get self-absorbed and you get unhappy. You know, somebody described earthly relationships as a number of long-term intimate friendships you have. Not how much money you earn. How many friendships you have that are intimate where you can depend on these people on a phone call, where they'll show up for you and love you as you are. Boy, aren't we all looking for that? Yeah. So first of all, God is a team. Secondly, God said, now I'm going to make man. And the first thing he said about man after Adam, uh, the animals came to Adam and he named them and he, you know, all the creation stuff that God did. Isn't that wonderful what God did for man? The reason God created man last, by the way, is he wanted to present Adam with this beautiful universe. Isn't that great? The stars in the sky, the plants, the trees, the animals, and how effortless it was with Adam. He had a rest with God. And he was entering into God's rest as God created him. Stress only happened after the fall. <laughs> there was no stress before that. God said, it is not good for what? Man to be alone. be alone. So God designed us to be part of a team. Now, I'm going to talk this morning about some things that we've taught around the world to our leadership in different countries. Uh, I've taught it for years, and I've been waiting for the right moment to teach it in our university. By the way, these courses now are available, and they're going to be applying toward credit. So we'll be giving you more information on that. We just met uh, yesterday with some of our uh, people and we're, 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 we believe it's God's will that we, we move ahead and begin this process of getting our university accredited. So part of this is, is going to be available. And so if you'll take notes and everything and follow up, uh, there'll be some requirements on your part if you're going to take it for credit. But here we have it. Two foundations, I believe, are basic for good teamwork. The first are character traits, character issues. If you don't build people of character on your team, they won't last. We're going to get into that. And we look at three character traits that I, I've seen over the years really work for teamwork. One is integrity, second is accountability, and third is responsibility. So those are character traits. We're going to go back over these in a moment. I'm just introducing them. And the other are personality traits. The character traits are foundational, but also the personality traits. And I look at them as two sawhorses, if you can visualize that, two sawhorses, and the board across them is the balance. And each sawhorse has three legs. <laughs> on one side are the character legs, on the other side are the personality traits. Everybody must experience these three things in their life to feel fulfilled, to be happy. Belongingness, which is group-related. Competence, which is task-related. And significance, which is self-related. These are perceptive things. These, how you perceive yourself in the group and how you perceive yourself on the task and how you perceive yourself and who you are 
Let's look at these right now, okay? Uh, let's go back to the character issues and take those one at a time. Number one, integrity. Uh, integrity comes out of a Latin term called integer, which means whole, complete. Isn't that interesting? Integrity means whole or complete. Some good synonyms would be consistency, honesty, accuracy. The anonym, the opposite of integrity, is hypocrisy. Interesting. Hypocrisy, where a person may say one thing and do another. There's not wholeness. There's not completeness. There's dividedness. When we lack integrity, we're divided. Interesting that uh, uh, Paul said, this one thing I do, isn't it? This one thing I do. He had a single goal in life. Isn't it interesting that peace in Philippians 4, 6 is when, and I've taught this before, I'll just repeat it. Peace is when your head is in alignment with your heart. It's not divided. It says, be anxious for nothing. What is anxiety? Anxiety is when your head gets out of sync with your heart. Your head tells you one thing and your heart tells you another and you get anxious. So he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will garrison, here it is, watch it, garrison your heart and your mind. Peace is when your heart and your head are aligned, and they're both aligned to Christ. That's peace. That's beyond understanding. So uh, what is integrity? It's acting according to your values, your beliefs, the principles you hold. Boy, how we love people of integrity. When they say they're going to do something, they'll do it. When they say they're going to be somewhere, they're there. They're on time. They're, they're, they have integrity. Integrity comes out in everything in your life. Every relationship, your marriage, your friends, all relationships manifest the level of integrity you walk in. And so all of us, believe me, are growing in this area constantly. I'm trying to improve in my integrity. I try to be alert. And uh, as I get older, I forget things. And so my integrity gets shaken once in a while because of my forgetfulness. <laughs> so I say, Holy Spirit, you got to remind me. You've got to remind me. You've you got, you got to stay on top of this. You've got to administrate. Listen, if the Holy Spirit can administrate the body of Christ, he can certainly administrate us. So integrity stems from the Latin word whole or complete. So the first character trait is integrity. Secondly is accountability. Accountability. Uh, this actually stems from the Latin uh, which means to give an account, a compter. Actually, it comes from the prefix uh, to calculate. To calculate. Are the figures you're calculating accurate to the truth? Now, remember the parable that Jesus gave. And by the way, we're going to see these later, how these all tie in with kingdom principles that Jesus taught. He said a certain man gave a certain amount of money to his servants, and he then caused them to give an account of what they did. Accountability is very important. It's actually in its core value related to governance and to money lending. That's where it really comes out of. But we also tied in with character. It's giving an accurate account of your activities. That's what accountability is. How important it is. Listen, you will not develop your full potential if you don't have accountable people in your life that you're accountable to and that are accountable to you. Yeah. And the degree you hide things is the degree you personally enter into deception. Mm -hmm. Having true accountability is so important in our life. Hi, Christina. Uh, so... Character-wise, it's very, very important. If we're going to build a team, we're talking about kingdom team building today, how to build a solid kingdom team. And if you're in business, you're building a team. If you're uh, like you, Christina, you're in multi-level marketing, you're actually building a team of people. And uh, uh, we're mentioning two, like two tripods of three legs each. Character issues, just I'm reviewing for those that came into the class just a little late. 
The character issues in one, which is, is integrity, accountability, and responsibility, and the other are personality issues. If people don't get fulfilled in three areas, believe me, they, they, they're not happy. So we're gonna look at those. So first of all is integrity. Secondly is accountability. Accountability. Are, do you have somebody you're accountable to? Somebody you have to answer to. Uh, we're working heavily now with pro-pastors, uh, all pro-pastors with Paul Pickering. He's actually bringing, believe you, this is exciting. He's bringing in his 1,500 pastors in the state of Florida that are part of his organization now into our university and into WATV network, into KBBN. So we're incorporating a whole group of pastors that Paul has built relationship with, and they have what's called champion tables. Paul's one of our new broadcasters, by the way, both WATV and KBBN. And uh, he's on 3 o'clock on KBBN and 4 o'clock on WATV. You may want to listen to him because he's talking about the principles. What he does is they have champion tables where pastors get together every week for one to two hours and they're accountable to each other. They sit down and say, what have you been looking on on the internet this last week? Have you had a problem with pornography? I mean, they're accountable. You, when you know you're going to go meet with accountable people, it may affect a little of your lifestyle. <laughs> That's why accountability is so important. And Jesus taught it. He said that the, the, the master gave the servants a certain amount and said, now use this money wisely and I'm going to return and you are going to give an account. So accountability is important. Integrity, very important. Integrity means complete and whole. It means you are what you say. The opposite of integrity, as I mentioned earlier, is hypocrisy. So there's integrity. Now accountability is the second trait. And third is responsibility. This is more of a practice issue. Uh, practicing the ability to watch over moral, material, spiritual, and mental real estate. Are you responsible? Am I responsible? Taking that responsibility is sometimes the difficult thing, you know. The moment we say that I will take responsibility for this, it changes everything, doesn't it? And so just the words, I am responsible, says a whole lot, doesn't it? it means I'm not going to pass the buck. I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to depend on others to do it. I'm taking that responsibility. Isn't it interesting that God uses the term I am so powerfully? When he appears to Moses, what's the word he gives to Moses? I am that I am. He says, now you're looking at the one who will perform it. I take responsibility for what I created. That's what God's saying. And I will be what you need me to be, Moses. If, I, if you need me to fill your mouth with words in Egypt, I will do that. If you need me to stand at the Red Sea so when your staff touches the water, the water split, I am. So responsibility is a huge issue. And the moment we say internally to ourselves, I take responsibility for my life, I take responsibility for my family. Now, I can't make them do things, but I can guide them. I'm responsible for my personal behavior. I can't blame it on the way I was raised, if my mom or dad didn't love me or did love me, or, or if I've been mistreated by uh, somebody else in my life. I can't, I can't blame them for that. I take responsibility for that. And the moment you do that, that sets a course of action in your life that solves the problem. The problem never gets solved if you don't take responsibility. You hand it off to somebody else and now you become their victim. They may never forgive you. And they may never want you to be comfortable. Their goal in life may be, may be to make you miserable. They like the pain. They like the pain. They like to watch you suffer. Why? Because they suffered. And maybe they blame you for something you maybe didn't even do. So taking responsibility. So that, what are the three character issues? That these are important issues if you're building a team. You want to look for these character traits in people. Integrity is number one. Number two is accountability. Are they willing to be accountable? Thirdly, 
are they taking responsibility for their actions and for their duties? Are they doing what they said they would do? Now, this is, I hope this is not a condemning teaching because I'm, I'm talking to myself as well here. I'm, I'm not perfect in these areas, but I want to be. I want to be a man of integrity. I've, I prayed for years, Lord, help me to be a man of integrity, that my words match. Amen. I don't want to be a hypocrite. And a lot of people blame that. You see, here's what people do spiritually. Oh, yeah, there are a bunch of hypocrites down there. You know what? They're not taking responsibility for their own spirituality. They're blaming the hypocrites in the church. But there are some hypocrites. <laughs> if you want to find hypocrites, there are plenty around, you know what I mean, uh, to find. So you know, don't, don't give excuses. All right. So integrity, accountability, responsibility. Say it with me. Integrity, accountability, responsibility. All right, we've got to move right on. Those are the three character issues of people you want on your team. By the way, we have a saying around the world, and I, I, I hear it repeated now, and I don't know anybody else that said it, but I know it's coming back to us because we've said it so much. Integrity is longevity. Integrity is longevity. You want longevity in relationships. People that have a bunch of short-term relationships are always frustrated. They're always trying to look for something new or better, and they're not going to find it. Because like attract like. <laughs> You know, you can walk into a room and you end up kind of pretty much talking to people and, and kind of connecting with people that are pretty much like you. Mm -hmm. So if you're a person of integrity, it's, it, a lot of these things are almost unspoken. They're like, they're, they're like sensed in the, in the fifth sense, in the sixth sense, you know, things that you pick up. So anyway, this, th these, are, uh, these are three areas of character issues. Now, what about personality issues? These are not character issues now. These are personality traits or personality issues that if a person does not have them. So what I do in people, and you, you, you don't know that I always have a plan in my relationships, but I do. I have a plan because th this is important. I've, I've studied human behavior now for almost 50 years of ministry, so I, you, know, you learn by mistakes. And I could write a book on mistakes. It'd be somewhere around 1,500 to 2,000 pages. <laughs> because <laughs> I made my share. But you know what? The good thing about a mistake is you know how not to do it next time. You know, so a yeah. failure really is your friend. Just don't do it twice. That's stupid. I mean, you know, excuse me. You know what I mean? So now, number one, belongingness. Belongingness is group related. It's feeling a part of a group or a family. Everybody needs a family. A business is smart if they build family, not just workers. I call people my family, mm -hmm. our workers. I say, you're part of, you're part of the broadcast family. All of, our, all of our broadcasters, I call them family. I look at them as a family member because we're belonging to each other. We belong to a common radio station online. It's internet, so we don't all meet each other, but we see each other or hear each other or know we're there, so we feel a part of something. Everybody must feel a part of a family of some sort to be emotionally adjusted well and happy. Now some people like big families, some like smaller families. <laughs> some like to, my, my, my one son, uh, Chris, likes to be with a couple of people, one or two max people. He's not a big people person. Now Bella, she can go to a swimming pool and before very long she's got 10 people around her. She's a social buzz. She just connects with people. Because why? Well if you want friends, you gotta be a friend. So she knows how to kind of introduce herself and approach people. Chris doesn't do that that much. He's very selective with his friends. And he doesn't like, I, I'm impressed with my son. I really I am. I, I'm bragging a little bit if that's okay. But he is such a man of integrity that he doesn't put up with people that aren't, don't, don't have integrity. He just can't handle it. Mm. And he has a little bit of trying to correct the world, and I, he's gotten kind of over that on the bus. He learned the hard way when somebody hit him with a seatbelt. And, you know, you, you're not out there to straighten out the world, you know. I mean, he told them they can use bad words, but they can't say, they can't swear in the name of Jesus. Right. He, he won't allow that. Well, you know, you, you might as well talk to the wind with some kids because they hear it at home and they're going to say it on the bus. And so, I mean, he is a man of integrity. My son is dead. So as a result, he doesn't have as many friends, but the friends he has... Man, they hang out. They get it. They get it together. They they are they are on the same frequency. They get on the same frequency real quick because they're, they're solid. You see what I'm saying? So family is important. How you build that? 
Now, Jesus called the 12. Isn't this interesting in Mark 3? Jesus called the 12, not that he would anoint them and send them out to minister. The Bible says the first reason Jesus called the 12 is that he might be with them. When God came to this earth in the form of his son, the very first thing mentioned in the Gospels is he wanted 12 people to walk with. Now, 12 may be a good yeah. number. Maybe that's the ideal number of friends. I don't know. Maybe one's going to still turn on you, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but if you can have, listen, if you can have 12 good intimate friends in your lifetime, I mean, through your lifetime, that's amazing. You are a blessed person. I mean, if you can have 12 really close people. And, you know, 70 followed Jesus and then 500 and then the multitude. So it didn't mean he didn't have big crowds around him, but he chose to walk with 12 and specifically with yeah, three. three. Yeah. Peter, James, and John. Those he took up to the mountain. Now you can't be close friends to everyone. You just can't do it. And the more popular you are, the more people want to get up next to you. So you've got to be selective. And there's nothing wrong with being selective my daughter came to me and she said, Dad, there's a girl at school that bugs me to death and she just wants to be my friend and she hangs on me and I, I, I just don't know what to do. I, I, and I told her, I said, Bella, Isabella, it's totally your prerogative to choose who you want to be with. Mm -hmm. Just tell her. Just say, you know what, I, I, I think you're an okay person. I don't, I don't know you real well, but I, I just don't want to be your friend. Tell them that. Be honest. That's integrity. Tell them in a nice sort of way. Don't put them down, you know. Well, she does this to everybody in the class because, well, she's insecure, probably comes out of a home. And I said, well, Bella, you may want to take her on as a mission. Yeah. You may, you know, you may want to forget about your feelings and your needs and reach out to this girl. And so when I told yeah. Isabella that, now she's reaching out to all the, <laughs> you know, the misfits. I guess she thought dad thought that was cool and, and so she gets some interesting friends because she looks at them as missions now you know and, and she took the whole thing out of what she liked to what maybe how can I meet another person's need of feeling belongingness see what that girl in her class was looking for was belongingness how you perceive yourself in the group is important how you think others view you in the group that's very important if you kind of constantly feel rejection, you know, maybe you better stop and kind of see how you're relating. Okay? So belongingness is important. It's how we view ourselves in the light of the group. So belongingness is group related. Secondly is significance. Significance is self-related. Now here's where the devil really tries to work us over. He tries to make us feel unworthy, condemned, judged, depressed, out of it, not capable. I mean, you know, the enemy will throw all these curveballs at us through people. Trust me. So your significance, and we're going to see as I close in a moment, we're going to see that all these are found in Christ. You cannot look on earth to a lot of these issues. You've got to find it with your relationship to Jesus because Jesus makes a way for all of these to be fulfilled. See what I'm saying? So significance is vital, it's important if you're gonna be healthy, if you're gonna have a healthy self view. You know what some, some synonyms of significance are? Authority, dominion, power, stature, honor, glory, standing, greatness, something that's weighty, something significant has weight, it's distinct, these are all synonyms of the word significance, isn't that interesting? Mm. It's a quality or state of being important. Uh, Dan was telling me about an event they went to uh, this, since they've seen this, and it was, what was it called? Passion. Passion. And, and he, the first thing almost he told me about when I came into the room was this event, how important that I have to say. That was significant. Because it, 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 it lets you know what slave trade uh, is being done in America. That whole event was around us. How many people were there at the stadium? 60,000. 60,000 people had gathered, and it was in Atlanta, was it? Or? The Georgia Dome. Georgia Dome. And so that, now when you think back in your mind, that was significant. It had weight. It influenced you. Mm -hmm. And so significance are 
uh, it means it, it has weight. It's something of influence. And some people carry that significance, and it's the way they view themselves. People will never see you as significant if you don't see yourself as significant. You say, well, isn't that pride? No, that's not pride. Mm -hmm. It's seeing who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have significance. It means I make a difference where I am, Amen. who I'm with. Significance is absolutely important. Hi, Larry. How you doing? Good. So uh, these are character traits that we need. And uh, significance, oh, I'm sorry, this is personality traits. I, I didn't get the top thing right there. Significance is really important. And then finally, competence. Competence. The third part of the tripod of personal issues. Belongingness is group related, significance is self related, competence is task related. How well you do a task is vital to your self concept. Now, I built an airplane and, and mm -hmm. I'm a little bit proud of that. It took me eight years, a lot of sanding, a lot of work, but I got depressed the day I got it finished. <laughs> Because it was a task that was, but I was proud that, of how it looked. In fact, I believe I sold it so quick because it looked so good. Some University of Arkansas head of uh, engineering department flew down from university from Arkansas and, and he went out the airport and, and he got in the airplane and we flew over Clearwater Beach with it and, and it looked beautiful because I, I really finished it nice. It, it, it was a task well done. And I was flying over Clearwater Beach and he leaned over and he said, take me back, I'm going to the airport. I thought, oh, he doesn't like my plane. So we went back and landed. He didn't hardly say another word. I told him how much I wanted for it. I thought, you know, if he's really interested, he's going to try to bargain me down a little bit on the price. And he was getting out of the airplane, getting in his car to go back to the uh, airport. He rented a car. And he said, I'll, he said, I'll send you a cashier's check. You'll have it Friday. I like that sound. That was nice. <laughs> He says, can you fly it up to Arkansas next week? I said, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, but that was a task. That I look back on that with, with, with a certain amount of accomplishment because it's something not everybody builds an airplane and then flies it. You know, I mean, so this is, some things in life become kind of milestones for us that give us, give, us, give us confidence to go do other things. Now, I don't know if it's a man thing. You women help me out. But I think sometimes we men are very, very dependent upon tasks, our jobs, for self-image. How well we do a job is important to us. And, and, it, and it, all this goes back again to the character stuff. How well you do the job has to do with your integrity. You're taking responsibility. How, your accountability. All that, you know, has to do with this task. So these all are interrelated. Does this, does this help you a little bit? This is a good teaching, isn't it? I've taught this in Romania. I've taught it in the Philippines to leadership on how to build a team. These are the characteristics you want in people. Now, let's finish it up. Uh, let's just make a statement around these six items, all right? The foundation for great teamwork is, number one, a committed group of people with integrity, accountability, and taking responsibility who feel they belong who feel they are making a difference and who perform well. Amen. That would be my definition of a really solid team based on these six things I just taught you about this last half hour. Does this make sense? Yeah. Let's repeat it one more time. A committed group of people with integrity, accountability, and taking responsibility who feel they belong who feel they are making a difference and who, who perform well. And if people will feel this, they will have long-term relationships on your team. <coughs> you know, Carol and Joe have been with me now for years and years, and, and people will ask me, is that couple still, you know, one of the first thing people ask me about our ministry, is that couple still with you? Wow, they've been with you a long time. See, that, that I, I'm not here to impress people, but I'm saying it, it, gives, it gives your ministry validity. When people stay with you a long time. Bill and Linda have been long-term friends. We've known each other quite a few years. And they kind of moved over from Orlando so we could be closer yeah. together. So, I mean, you know, I take my friends serious. Dave, you know, and I, you and I have been, we've known each other. How long? 
10, 12 years? 10, 12 years. Yeah, 10, 12 years. And we've been friends. We talk on the phone occasionally, and you've been on, you know, the board of our ministry and different things. So, we, you know, uh, we, we, we have, I like long-term friendships. I had a call the other day, and with this I'll close. I had a call the other day, somebody that used to work with us on the streets of San Francisco in the 80s. Oh, wow. And you know what they said? Awesome. This was the most unusual thing. They said, Jerry, we were just, my wife and I were just talking about you. We miss you. I thought, you miss me? You haven't seen me for 20 years. <laughs> But see, again, earthly happiness is the number of long-term intimate friendships you have. It has nothing to do with the Bible and how much you love Jesus. I'm talking about earthly happiness. Earthly happiness is the number of long-term friend intimate friendships. People you can call up, be with in two minutes, and it's like you never left their sight. You know what I'm saying? They can go back into your home. We have a couple called Paul and Marcy. They are the godparents for both of our kids. And uh, they now live in Seattle. They actually moved out here to be in Tampa for, for three years so they could be closer to us. And he, Paul used to work with me on the streets of Seattle all the time, setting up our sound equipment for our homeless outreach. And they're just great friends. Mm -hmm. They're just great friends. And they called recently and said, we're going to be out in Tampa. And uh, they said, well, stay with us. We got an apartment upstairs, so stay with us for a few days. And they did. And, and when we connected, we weren't together two or three minutes. And it's like we never left each other. Why? Because we've developed relationships over the years, and we know them. They know us. They know my weaknesses, that I'm forgetful and getting a little old, you know, and stuff. They, they put up with all that, mm -hmm. and they don't judge me. Paul's a character. He's the funniest guy I've ever seen. And uh, next to Bill. Uh, those two get them in the same room. We'll have the, the walls will be caving in. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just saying, this, this is, this is, these are the kind of people you want to look for. People of integrity, accountability, responsibility. People that feel belongingness, and we could go into a whole teaching on each one of these areas why people don't feel that, and it's not your fault necessarily, it's just some of their background, healing they need to go through. Mm -hmm. But when you get a solid team of people, be grateful. Mm -hmm. Be grateful. As you're building your team of supporters, Dan, you know, this will help you maybe, you know. Maybe you'll have a chance to teach some of this to your team. And uh, you want to build the kind of team that's going to be with you a long time. And we're doing that internationally with our King of Life Universities. By the way, take a look at our new banner out there in the other room. It's cool. Look at our new office over here that they're letting us use here now, uh, part-time. You know, we're not taking over. We're just, Corey was very grateful and said, hey, you know, we got, uh, we got the university right here. So we've got a, a university located at this campus here with, 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 this, with the uh, uh, real estate. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. So, you know, these are friends, and I believe Corey and Billy are going to be long-term friends. I protect my friends. I protect them. I don't let things come between us. I make sure all issues are dealt with right on the spot. We just went through an issue this last week that we sat down and just worked it out. I mean, not between me and them, but just, it, you know, it's something that I had to work out. I, I deal with issues head-on immediately. I don't let them divide people because what the enemy will do, see, is divide. Mm -hmm. It's the old divide and conquer trick. They'll try to separate mm -hmm. because he knows the moment he separates you and you get out on your own, you're vulnerable to, to temptation, yeah. to defeat, to, to destruction of the enemy. It's people around you that protect you. People around you protect you. Even Jesus in the garden, even though the guys were asleep, he took right. them into the garden. They were there. And Peter did the best he could. He was going to take the guy's head off, ended up taking his ear off. But, you know, hey, he's at least there. Isn't it interesting? Even in the garden, Jesus didn't want to be alone. That's interesting, isn't it? You need your friends. You need people around you. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we build our kingdom teams, I thank you that you give us practical wisdom. The things we taught today are so practical. These are things that people need, emotional needs they have. And if we can help meet those needs, uh, Lord, then they will be fulfilled. And we want people to be fulfilled in Christ. We want to turn them to Jesus because he's our strength. It's not what we do. It's how you do it through us. So we depend on you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. All right.